Perhaps you remember something from a previous algebra class called the vertical line test. And if you had some kind of function and you were able to draw a vertical line and have it hit the function no more than once, um, then it was a function. Otherwise, we'd say it wasn't a function. So in this case, we would say that this passes the vertical line test, and so we would say that this is a function. Well, if we had something like this, we would draw a vertical line, and we would see that it hits the graph here and here, and so we would say that this is not a function. It's a pretty simple test to apply. Just draw a vertical line and make sure that it hits the graph no more than once. And perhaps you also recall something called the horizontal line test. And that works like this. You have a graph and you draw a horizontal line anywhere on the graph and you see that it hits the graph no more than once. And in that case, you would say that the function is one to one. So this was a different test. This is a test to tell if something is one to one and something like this, if you were to draw a horizontal line across, you would see that we have a problem because we have this value here, I'll call that x1, and then we have this value here, I'll call that x2, and if this is the function f, we see that we have f of x1 equal to f of x2. That would be this value right here, it would be f of x1 or f of x2, same thing. But we have x1 not equal to x2, they're different values. So we would say that this is not one to one. So this idea of something being one to one, let's make that a little more formal. And in fact, I'm not gonna use the term one to one as much as I'm gonna use the word injective. And it means the same thing. A function that is one to one is also a function that is injective. So here's the definition. A function f, which goes from a to b, a and b are sets here, is said to be injective or one to one if for all elements x1 and x2 that are in the set a, f of x1 equals f of x2 implies that x1 equals x2. And in a lot of textbooks, you see this definition phrased in terms of its contrapositive, which would look something like this. A function f, which goes from a set A to a set B, is said to be injective, or one-to-one, -one, if x1 not equal to x2 in A implies f of x1 is not equal to f of x2 in B. And the contrapositive has the same truth value as the, orig as the uh, original statement, so uh, these things are actually the same, but in practice, when you're actually uh, using the definition, try and use this definition. This is the easier one to work with than the contrapositive. Let's look at an example. Suppose I have a set A, which has the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, and I have a set B, which has the letters A, B, C, and D. And I'm going to look at this function phi, which maps 1 to B, 2 to C, 3 to A, and 4 to D. Is this injective? Well, we want something such that f of x1 equal, equals f of x2 implies x1 equals x2. And if we look at the values here, we see that any values that you have in set B, we have just uh, one thing mapped to each one. So this one, yeah, that's going to be injective. I'm not going to actually prove it yet. I'll show you how to prove something is injective later on. But for now, um, just note the difference between this example and this example. Take the same sets, A and B. Now define a function chi that maps 1 to B, 2 to C, 3 to C, and 4 to D. Is this injective? And now we see the problem, and it has to do with this element C right here, because we see that chi of 2, what's chi of 2? Chi of 2 is C, equals chi of 3. What's chi of 3? Oh, that's also C. Yeah, these are equal to each other. But 2 does not equal 3. They're not the same thing. So this is not injective.
So how do you actually prove that a function is injective? Well, it's actually very easy. Here's what you do. How to prove that some function from a set A to a set B is injective. Two easy steps. Step one, let x1 and x2 be elements of A and suppose that f of x1 equals f of x2. I'm getting that from the definition up here because the definition of injective means that you take this statement right here, f of x1 equals f of x2, and you show that x1 equals x2. And in fact, when you're proving that something is injective, you can actually uh, almost write this line verbatim. I mean, you might have to change the letter used to represent the function, and maybe you might want to use uh, you know, m and n or a and b or something else for the elements, but you more or less just write this down as the first step of your proof. Step two, show that x1 equals x2. That's what we're trying to show based off the definition. So really this follows almost uh, word for word directly from the definition. So it's really important that you know the definition of injective functions so that you can prove that something is injective. Let's look at an example. Show that the function f from real numbers to real numbers given by f of x equals e to the x is injective. Okay, here's the proof. Step one. I'm just going to rewrite pretty much what I have right here. Let x1 and x2 be elements of, and in this case, instead of a, I'm going to write whatever would be here, my, uh, my domain, and that would be r, real numbers. And suppose that f of x1 equals f of x2. Great. Well, if f of x1 equals f of x2, that means that e to the x1 power equals e to the x2 power. Great. But this means that if I apply the natural log to both sides of the previous step, I get x1 equals x2. Well, that's great. That's why I was trying to show. That was step two right there. So this means that f is injective. And notice when you write a proof, always use complete sentences. Okay, let's look at another example. Show that the function g from the set of integers to the set of integers given by g of n equals 5n is injective. Here's the proof. Step one, let n1 and n2 be elements of z, and suppose that g of n1 equals g of n2. And notice this is pretty much the same thing as this line right here, this step one. I'm just changing the notation to fit the problem that I have. Well, if g of n1 equals g of n2, that means that 5n1 equals 5n2. That's just using the value of g right here. But this means that n1 equals n2, just divide by five on both sides. So g must be injective. Okay, but what if you have a function that you uh, know is not injective? How do you show that something is not injective? Well, you can find a specific counterexample, but let's try and mimic the proofs that we were using before and see where something goes wrong. So here's an example. Show that h, which goes from real numbers to real numbers greater than or equal to zero, given by h of x equals the absolute value of x, show that that's not injective. Okay, so here's our attempt at our proof here. Let x1 and x2 be elements of the real numbers, and suppose that h of x1 equals h of x2. And again, that's just rewriting this step right here. Okay, no problem so far. Let's keep going. So this means that the absolute value of x1 equals the absolute value of x2, and that is coming right from the definition of h of x. Okay, so far so good. But this means that x1 equals plus or minus x2, and here's where we have the problem. Because we wanna show that, if we wanna show it's injective, we wanna show that x1 equals x2. But that's not what we have, we have x1 equals plus or minus x2. That's what would happen if you were to solve this equation right here. So we don't get that, so therefore h is not injective.